Hey, physics nerds. Uh, sorry I'm not here. My daughter is uh, has a flu, so that's a lot of fun. Um, but you are charging into simple harmonic motion and waves without me, and I will see you tomorrow and like patch things up. I was hoping to start this with a little demo, but uh, I don't know who's uh, hanging out with you, and I don't know if we should trust them with springs and masses, so you might have to just use your imagination on this one. Um, but the whole idea today is thinking about how things oscillate, right? Oscillation is like bounce back and forth. So imagine if you set up a pendulum or a, a spring and a mass, and I think there's one sitting on the front desk right now, um, and you pull it down or you push it up to the top, right? It, if you look at it, it's not hanging at the spring's m minimum, right? It's not hanging at the at the farthest point up because there's some mass on it. So the, So you start here. And if you, you can pull it down a little bit and let it go, or you could push it up to the top, right, and then let it go, and it would follow this pattern. It would either start from the bottom and go up. If you pulled it down and let it go, it would go up and then come back down. Or you could push it up to the top, let it go, and it would go down to the bottom and come back up to the top. It's making a wave, right? It's making a, an oscillation. Um, okay. So I want you to be able to uh, calculate period and frequency, um, displacement, and show simple harmonic oscillators, oscillations, or simple harmonic motion. They're all kind of the same idea. All right. <clears throat> Guess who learned how to use GIFs on, the, on, on my presentations? It's me. I figured out how to use GIFs. <laughs> Sorry, I noticed that, like, they're kind of packed up there. Anyway, I thought it helped because, like, you can see it, see the motion. Um, here's some oscillation examples: um, a horizontal spring bouncing back and forth, like we like we talked about in the warm up. Um, maybe a something floating on a wave, right? And you can you notice like the duck just goes up and down, um, but there's this oscillation, a pendulum popping back and forth. Um, but things like the wing on an airplane, you look out and you can see them bouncing up and down anytime there's a bounce, right, returning motion. It doesn't have to be making a wave necessarily. All it's doing is this reciprocal motion, bump, 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 uh, a diving board, right? Or I don't know if you've seen like in really windy days, like skyscrapers will oscillate back and forth. It just means like a little bit of a vibration, right? Um, ah, gifts again. <laughs> So simple harmonic oscillations, it's a back and forth motion, right? Um, the, a pendulum's easy to think about, like ticking back and forth. Or the spring with a mass on it um, is another good one. Um, this, we're just kind of doing some vocabulary today, and probably you know some of it, but I think it'll help you to write it down. It's the period to complete one cycle. We use a big T for it, um, and it's measured in seconds. Right, so this is our spring bouncing up and down, comes to a maximum, comes back down to a minimum. If you start it right now, now that's a full period. It's a full cycle. I know it goes from bottom to top, but it's got to come back down to the bottom to make a full cycle. So if you start at the top, now... And now that's one period. Cool. Um, the amplitude D -D -D, is the maximum displacement away from the equilibrium position. If you thought about this, I'll go back to that slide in a second. If you have a flat, flat, beautiful, calm lake, the Zugersee, and you throw something heavy into it, maybe like a physics textbook. <laughs> no, 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 like, like a humanities textbook. <laughs> uh, or, I don't know, looks more like a box of cereal, Gorkevich. You throw something heavy into it, right? Um, what it'll do is depress the water, which will then spring back up, right? And it does this. Water waves oscillate around the equilibrium, and the equilibrium is what happens when it's glassy and flat. Waves don't do this. They don't sit on top of where the water naturally is, and they don't sit below where the water naturally is. They oscillate above and below equally of that amount. And this, the distance up 
and the distance down are the same, and those we call amplitude, right? Amplitude, amp. We measure it in meters. It's it's tempting if, if I don't know if you've ever been surfing, but like you are sitting on your board up here and sitting on your board at the bottom of the trough, the crest is twice the amplitude above you, which is scary, right? Often you'll read a surf report and they'll talk about three meter waves. That means this is three meters, the amplitude is three meters, and that means you have six meters of water, 18 feet, 20 feet of water above you. Don't go out in three meter waves. <laughs> um, because the amplitude's the distance from equilibrium up to the top or down to the bottom. Cool? Going back. So it's displacement from the equilibrium position. Um, and the final piece is frequency, and the frequency is number of cycles in a second. So this one, since it's so slow, would have a decimal answer for the number of cycles per second. So let's try to uh, cal measure it. All right. Going, 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 and done. Like six seconds, right? So this has a period of six seconds. So it goes through, in, in one second, it goes through one-sixth of a full cycle, right? So its frequency is the reciprocal. Because it would take, in one second, you need six of those seconds to make a full period. So it gives you a sixth of the wave um, in, in that time, in that time of one second. Um, we'll mess with that a little more if that I can give you better examples when I can put it in your hands and show you. Uh, if you graph this, you could think about playing the same game with our spring bouncing up and down. And if you attach like a pen to it and drag paper past it, the height of this would create a sine curve or a cosine curve, depending on where you started. Um, so this oscillation, you can actually graph the height based on time. And this is kind of how I would envision that. Maybe you want to draw that setup just so it like sticks with your mind how reciprocating motion in one dimension turns into sinusoidal curves in two dimensions. All right, we'll mess with this when I get back because I wanted to do a demo with you. Um, but here's our equilibrium. And if we put our uh, pendulum so it bounced, or our spring so it bounced up and down, you'd get it, you'd start it from the top and the pendulum would fall and make tension on the spring, and then the spring would pull it back up, and it would start this oscillation, oscillating movement, right? Um, so I want you to think, because we'll mess with this when I get back, how you could make it look like, where is it? Oh, it's not there. There. How you could make it look like this, right? The red is still the same red. How could you turn it into the blue curve? Like, what could you do? How could you vary this system? to get the red curve to turn into the blue curve, to get this to change the amplitude. Like, think about what about this would change the amplitude. And it's not just put it up, well, um, yeah, there's there's a couple of ways that you can change it. Think about that. Maybe sketch this, because I'm going to come, come back and ask you about it on tomorrow. Think about this. We had uh, the red graph, still so the red graph, still the same red graph. How could you turn the red graph, how could you manipulate the system, this uh, original setup, to make it look like the blue graph? So instead of starting at the top, it starts at the bottom, right? How can you get that to happen? Um, think about this. How could you get it to start a little bit lower, but still then go uphill, then come downhill? Think about that. What we've done with both of these is called a phase shift. A phase shift is e more easily seen here. You can tell that this thing has been moved, like the crest has been moved uh, one unit to the right. Or alternatively, one, two, three, four, five units to the left. And it doesn't matter which way you want to look at it. Um, this guy, move him over here. This has been moved one, two, three, four units, three units to the right, or three units to the left. 
either way, right? That's called a phase shift. We're not changing anything, we're just sliding it. It's a horizontal translation for you mathematicians. Yes. Cool. All right. <clears throat> this is another one we can mess with. The period. How do you get the red curve to look like the blue curve? And I know it's it hasn't really been shifted over. We're still starting at a maximum. Our minimum are still at the same level. Um, but instead of making one full cycle in, what, six units, we make one full cycle, what, we make one full cycle with the blue in uh, 12 units, more or less. So we've doubled the period. We'd made we'd made we make this thing oscillate slower essentially, because if you if you look, by the time blue gets done oscillating once, green has oscillated once, twice. So we've effectively doubled the period, which means we've increased the time, which means we've slowed this down. How could you do that? How could you go the other way around? Red is the same that we've always been working with, but now blue goes one. Two, we've halved, halved the period. How can we do that physically? Right? We're messing with the period. Think about that. How, with, um, and what does that do the, to the frequency? Uh, all right. Another thing we can do with waves is change their vertical displacement. So we took red and dragged it down a little bit. How could you manipulate that? spring setup to get it to look like this. Nothing different, right? Maxes are in the same spots, but um, we're just shifting everything down. How could, how could you vary the setup? Cool. Now, I assume that you've seen this, that we're working with um, A's and B's and C's in trig in math, um, and really like A deals with the amplitude. Helpful that they call it the amplitude. D is the horizontal shift. It's basically the equilibrium because usually sine oscillates about zero. We don't we often want that oscillating about zero. So this is usually, you could call this the equilibrium. Um, we'll get into it in more detail, but B is uh, connected to the period. It's 2 pi over B or two, uh, the, the 360 over the period. And C is that horizontal translation the horizontal translation. And this uh, b is 2 pi over the period. Uh, yeah. So maybe jot those down. We'll get into get to them into some more detail. So what I'd like you to maybe try is look at this graph and uh, find a couple of pieces where the velocity is 0. Um, where the velocity is po positive and it's like has the largest magnitude, so it's going up the fastest, um, and a point where the acceleration is positive and it has the largest magnitude. Yeah. Pause me until you're ready. Okay. So the point where the velocity is zero. Let's see. Did we we graph we oh, we read the period off the graph? It's what a full point two. Great. No problem. Um, in one. Oh. Let's scoot this over. So the velocity is zero. It's going to happen any time the, the uh, mass goes up to the top or ends up at the bottom. It's not going up or down. It stops for a second, right? So its velocity is zero there and there and there and there and there and there. So all of those spots, zero velocity, right? Um, so a point where the velocity is positive and has the largest positive magnitude, think about when you're going uphill and it's the it's the steepest slope, it's the largest change in in y versus the change in x. From here to here, they're about one to one. But from here to here, I'm gonna go over the same amount. So go from like here uh, over one unit, right? Like that, right? Much bigger change. So it looks like. Right here, it has the highest slope. If you're into calculus, this is the derivative um, of the position, right? So I would say like right there and right there, yeah? Um, point where the acceleration is positive. So the acceleration is positive and has the largest magnitude. Well, you think about what acceleration 
means it's the biggest change in velocity. Um, and a change in velocity here, like I, I would assume that this was going downhill, negative velocity. Here it's going uphill, positive velocity. So we've had a pretty large change in velocity. And so we've had a large acceleration and a positive acceleration because it goes from being negative to positive. So that's a turnaround point and that's another turnaround point. So either of those would work. Just trying to put your, wrap your mind around graphs. All right. Um, and also think about this. We'll talk more about the conditions for simple harmonic oscillation, but with this, like, only one of these is simple harmonic oscillation. This is, n is an oscillation, but it speeds up, right? It's changing. It's, it's, not, it's not rhythmic and, and periodic, right? So not simple harmonic. This, this is just something falling, right? You're like, it's not, it doesn't bounce back up. There's no harmonic part, right? There's no, it's simple. It's not harmonic. This is simple harmonic. I think those are the same heights, right? Ah, it's iffy. But this looks most like simple harmonic motion. Cool? There's a simple harmonic oscillation worksheet in your notes packet. It should be sitting on the front table. Go grab one of those, and I will see you tomorrow. Ciao.